So welcome you to today's module. Uh, so today we are going to start a new topic uh, which would deal with uh, testing of hypothesis. So if you recall in the last course, uh, you did a bit of uh, uh, testing of hypothesis. So the basic problem in testing of hypothesis is that you are given a statement or a hypothesis which you want to test against a given alternative. So you have a null hypothesis which you want to test and you want to test this hypothesis against an alternative hypothesis which is given to you. So you try to find a test which is optimal in certain sense. So what you realized over there is it is not possible to find a test which is optimal in every possible sense because if you look at testing a hypothesis, a null hypothesis against an alternative hypothesis, while you are using any test, there are two possible kind of errors. One error is the probability that or the possibility that the test which you are using rejects H0, rejects the null hypothesis although the null hypothesis is true. Or the second kind of error is that it accepts H1 although H1 is false. So it is wrongly rejecting H0 or wrongly accepting H1. So these are the two kind of errors. So a best test would be the one for which both of these errors are minimum. But then you see that uh, such a scenario doesn't exist except in trivial conditions. So then what do you try to do? Then you try to identify one error which is more serious and you say that look, I would put, put a threshold, upper threshold on the type of error which I can afford. So I can call that a, a type 1 error. So I put a threshold on type 1 error. And then among all tests which have this threshold on type 1 error, I try to find the test which minimizes the second type of error. Now if you do that, uh, then we are in a position to get the best test in certain situations. But there also things are not that rosy, especially when you are dealing with two-sided hypothesis, like in the normal theta 1 case. If H0 theta is equal to theta 0 against theta 0 equal to theta 0 has to be tested, then you know that UMP test cannot be found among all level alpha tests. So uh, what I'll do uh, now is uh, I'll impose certain restriction on class of tests which we want to consider. In the last course, uh, one such restriction was unbiasedness. And you saw that when you impose the restriction on unbiasedness, it is possible to find uniformly most powerful tests among all unbiased tests in certain situations. So unbiased, restricting to unbiasedness uh, made our thing simpler. And unbiasedness looked like a uh, very reasonable condition because that ensures that power is always greater than or equal to 11. So another uh, restriction could be invariance, especially when your uh, testing problem at hand has a nice structure. That means it is invariant. So uh, before I go to the um, invariant uh, testing problem, uh, let me uh, review uh, the concepts which you did in the last course, uh, mainly with uh, dealing with uniformly most powerful and uniformly most powerful unbiased tests. So let me write down the review of UMP and UMPU tests. So UMP stands for uniformly most powerful and UMPU stands for uniformly most powerful unbiased tests. So if you recall our model is X has, which is data. So if my data is in the vector form X1, X2, Xn, this has a PDF or PMF F, which belongs to a family of distributions P. For example, this family of P could be normal theta 1 family where theta is any real number. So you have a unknown F which belongs to P. I do not know the true P. So what I have is uh, I have a P0 and P1 are two subsets of P says that their intersection is is fine. 
what I want to test is uh, uh, goal is to test H naught, which we call as a null hypothesis that F belongs to P0 against H1 that F belongs to P1. Note that since P0 and P1 are disjoint, these two are complementary statements that F belongs to P0 or F belongs to P1. Now this hypothesis which we want to test is called a null hypothesis. And the hypothesis against which a null hypothesis is to be tested is called alternative hypothesis. Uh, now recall uh, uh, when we, de we were dealing with the estimation, I said any estimator, or which I can also call as a decision rule, is nothing but a probability distribution for every observed value of the data. It gives me a what action I should take in action space. So here action space, my mm. A0 and A1. A0 means I say that H0 is true and A1 is that H1 is true. And A1 I say that H1 is true. So my goal is to take one of the actions, whether H0 is true, to decide whether H0 is true or H1 is true. So that is what my goal is. Now as I said, one way would be that immediately you have taken an observation, you decide whether H0 is true or H1 is true. Now such a test is called a randomized test, non-randomized test. Other possibility is that look, after you have observed X, you don't immediately take an action. You do a further randomization. And further randomization could be to decide whether A0 is true or A1 is true. So that, that second stage randomization is over the action space. Action space has only two elements. So I need to get a probability distribution over the action space. So for every given x, a randomized test is a probability distribution over the action space. So uh, a test is nothing but for every x belonging to the sample space, a probability distribution Delta dot given x is nothing but a probability distribution this on a on my x and space a. So what is the delta of a zero x? Because it's a discrete kind of a distribution. There are only two points in the x and space. So delta a zero x is what is the probability that you will take x and a zero? So that means probability of accepting h naught. What is the delta of A1 given x? That means for a given x, you take x and A1. That means you accept H1. Of course, since this is a probability distribution, this has to be same as 1 minus delta of A0 given x. Because uh, delta is a probability distribution over x in space. So delta of A1 given x has to be same as 1 minus delta A0 given x. So in fact, I can define a test function only through phi x and 1 minus phi x. Phi x is probability of rejecting H0 or accepting H1, which can I can call this as phi x, which is same as probability of taking X and A1, which is same as probability of rejecting H0. And I can call this as 1 minus phi x. So there is no need to talk everything in terms of a deltas. And so I can replace, I can replace them by there is no need to separately define delta A0 and delta A1. I can define delta A1 to be phi x, then delta of A0 would be 1 minus phi x. So I give a definition of a test function. So my test function phi is a map from Rn to 0, 1. 0 to 1. Why? Because it is a probability. And what is the interpretation? Phi x is 
probability of rejecting H naught given that you have observed x equal to x. So 1 minus phi x would be probability of not rejecting h naught given x equal to x. Now, using any test may result in two kind of errors. Using any test function phi results in two possible errors. What are those? Wrongly rejecting H naught. Another could be wrongly not rejecting H naught. So every, everything I'm talking in terms of uh, H naught only. So wrongly. So best thing would be if I can find a test for which both these kind of errors are minimum. But minimizing both the kind of errors simultaneously is not possible. The way it was not possible to minimize the risk function for every theta in the estimation problem because there were those constant estimators which were always minimizing the risk at a single point. Similarly here, if you consider the test which always rejects H0, phi x equal to 1. That means phi x equal to 1 for every x means whatever x you observe, it doesn't even see the data. It says that you always reject H0. If you reject H0, what is the probability of wrongly rejecting H0? Is because you're always rejecting H0. So, uh, so let me let me come to that before uh, because everything I have to talk in terms of a probability. So let me first talk about everything in terms of probabilities. So this is uh, wrongly rejecting H naught is called type one error. So what is it desirable? You minimize the probability of both kind of errors. Because I have to minimize probabilities because everything is in terms of a risk function. The risk function here would be in terms of a probabilities of the two kinds of errors. So what is a desirable thing? Minimize both kind of errors. simultaneously. That would be the ideal thing to do. But somehow this is not possible. I cannot minimize both the kind of errors simultaneously. As it was happening in the estimation problem that you cannot find an estimator which minimizes the risk at every parametric point. Because these constant estimators always minimize the risk at a particular point. So to see that, uh, for example, you can consider phi x is always 1 for every x. Let us consider this estimator. Let us consider this estimator. Phi naught x equal to 1 means it is always rejecting h naught. So, what is uh, probability of type 1 error? F naught of phi naught x would always be 1 for every f belonging to P0. So what is happening in this case? Probability of type 1 error, that means probability of rejecting H naught, when H naught is true, 
is always one. So probability of type one error is one. But it minimizes the probability of type two error. What is the probability of type two error? Probability of not, of wrongly not rejecting H naught. What is the probability of wrongly not rejecting H naught? That means F is true and you are not rejecting H naught. So that means one minus phi naught X. And what is this? This is zero for every F belonging to P1. So you are not wrongly not rejecting H naught. So that means you are not rejecting H naught, although H naught is true, uh, although H naught is false. H naught is false, that means F is in P1. So, this. so you see that there is a trade off between the two kind of errors. If one of the errors becomes one, the other becomes zero, or if one becomes zero, the other becomes one. Similarly, the other extreme situation is when phi 1x is zero. Phi 1x is zero, that means probability of rejecting H0 is zero. That means you never reject H0. So, what is happening in this case? EF of phi 1x, so this is proper test because it is a probability distribution which is degenerate, it always takes the x and a1. What is the expected phi 1x? This is 0. It is in fact for every f, so for every f belonging to p0. And this is a probability of type 1 error. That means probability of rejecting h0 when h0 is true is 0. So probability of type 1 error here is 0. But what happens to probability of type 2 error? E of 1 minus phi 1x becomes 1. So you see, there is some kind of a trade-off between the two kind of errors. If you try to minimize one, the other increases. So what is a way out? A way out is, I consider, I classify which error is more serious. And then I try to put an upper bound on probability of the error which is more serious. So a way out. is identify by the error that is more serious put an upper bound on the probability of the serious error Why? Because you will consider this error to be serious and you say that, look, if I make error in this decision, my losses would be very high. So I cannot afford error beyond certain limit for the error which is serious. So I put a bound on that serious error. And then I look at all the tests for which probability of this serious error is less than or equal to a fixed level, let us say alpha. And among all tests, I try to find out the one for which the probability of type 2 error is minimum. The other kind of error is minimum. Then find among tests satisfying upper bound on serious error. The one that minimizes the other error. So when I say other error means it is a probability of the other error. So to uh, give a feel of this, uh, let us see how can you identify which error is more serious. So suppose I own a manufacturing plant. Let us say uh, uh, manufacturing electric bulbs. Now, there is a new technology available in the market, and somebody who is selling that technology comes to me and says that, look, I have a new technology. If you use my technology, the average life length of the bulb would be increased. So he's making a claim that the average life 
of the bulb produced by me at present would get increased if I use his technology. Now, my question is whether to adopt it or not to adopt it. So how do we go about it? I see, for example, let us say currently my average uh, life of a bulb, a typical bulb produced by my existing plant is 500 hours. So I say, I test a hypothesis that H0 is 500. And the new one is saying that it should be more than 500. So my H1 becomes that the average life theta is greater than 500. So my, I have to test theta is equal to 500 against theta greater than 500. So one hypothesis is or theta less than or equal to 500 against theta greater than 500. Now let us look at if H0 I make to be theta less than or equal to 500 against theta greater than 500. Let us try to identify which type of error would be more serious. Suppose I wrongly reject H0. If wrongly I reject H0 means, that means I reject the claim that theta less than or equal to 500 though although it is so that means I am I am claiming that the new plant now new technology is good, although it is not good. Rejecting H naught, although H naught is true. Now if I do that, that means the new manufacturing plant would be worse than the existing one. Although I'll be spending a lot of money in acquiring the new plant. So that serious, that error is very serious because if I, that error happens, then I may be losing a lot of money in employing the new uh, manufacturing plant, although it would be worse than the existing one. So I'll be losing on both the grounds. One, in terms of money to get the new manufacturing plant. Second thing is, even the average life which I'll be getting would be less than 500. Now, would we wrongly not rejecting H0? That means, You are claiming, you are saying that theta is less than or equal to 500, but actually theta is greater than 500. So at the worst, what you may have is your status quo would be maintained and you will not be loss, losing anything if you commit second type of error. It is wrongly not rejecting H0. Wrongly not rejecting H0 means I am not rejecting H0. That means I am saying this, although this is true. So that means actually theta is greater than 500, but what I'm saying is theta less than or equal to 500. Right? I'm not rejecting it. Not say that I'm, I'm saying theta less than or equal to 500, but actually theta is greater than 500. So that means actually the new plant is good, but I'm saying new plant is no good. Now if that error happens, at the worst, I'll not employ a new plant. That status quo would be maintained. And I may not be, in that sense, losing a lot. So in this case, it would be more serious to commit the error of wrongly rejecting H0. Now, I can always uh, interchange H0 and H1 so that I can consider probability of wrongly rejecting H0 as a more serious error than the type 2 error. I can always interchange H0 and H1 to uh, interchange the role of type 1 error and type 2 error. So I say that I'll consider type 1 error to be more serious than type 2 error. So wrongly rejecting H0 would always be more serious than the other kind of error which is type 2 error. So, so what I say is if you look at EF of phi x for f belonging to f0, for f belonging to p0. What is this? Phi x was con uh, unconditional probability of rejecting h0. So it is a probability of rejecting h0 when average has been taken over the distribution of x. So it is a probability of rejecting h0 although f belonging to p0. That means h0 is true. So it is a probability of type 1 error. Of course, there is not a single probability. As you vary f, you get different type 1 errors. So it depends on what f is in p0. 
Now let's look at EF of yx for f belonging to, uh, so EF of 1 minus phi x. So what is EF minus of 1 minus phi x? Phi x was rejecting h naught. It is not rejecting h naught. That means you are accepting h naught. Accepting h naught, although p1 is 2. You are accepting h naught, although the alternative is 2. So this is called probability of type 2. For the test phi, what is E of phi x for f belonging to p1? Probability of rejecting h naught, although h naught is false because f is in p1. So this is the correct decision, rejecting h naught when actually h naught is not true. So this you call as a power of the test. So probability of type 1 error of test phi at the point f is in p0 of test phi. So what I try to do is uh, I try to fix one kind of error. So let us say probability of type 1 error. I put an upper bound on that test. So I say that a test phi, so let alpha belonging to 0, 1 be fixed. So a test phi is said to be of level alpha. If what happens? The probability of type 1 error for this is always less than or equal to alpha. So that means EF of phi x is always less than or equal to alpha for every f belonging to P0. That means probability of type 1 error for the test phi is always less than or equal to alpha. So what I do is because this error for f belonging to P0, this is an error. So for f belonging to P0, this gives me a probability of type 1 error. So I look at all tests for which probability of type 1 error is always less than or equal to alpha for every f belonging to P0. And among that, among those tests, I try to find out for which the probability of type 2 error is minimum. So uh, note that uh, this is same as probability of rejecting H0. when h naught is true. Why? Because f is in p0 is always less than or equal to alpha, which is basically probability of type 1 error. This is nothing but probability of type 1 error. So what I'm saying is uh, uh, test is said to have a level alpha. If for that, probability of type 1 error is always less than or equal to alpha for, F, for every f in P0. So what I do is uh, for a fixed alpha belonging to let I define a class of tests, d alpha as collection of all those tests phi, says that EF of phi x is always less than equal to alpha. So alpha is, is a given threshold to me. It says that, look, I can afford at the most this level of alpha. Then what I do is, so this is a class of uh, level alpha tests. What I try to do is, uh, I try to find a test in the alpha which for which, so goal is to find a level alpha test, so or, or to find a test phi naught belonging to d alpha. That means it has a level alpha. That means for which the probability of type one error is at most alpha. Find a test. Uh, uh, to find a test phi naught says that, which minimizes, says that 
its probability of type 2 error is minimum. So what is the probability of type 2 error? EF of 1 minus phi x, which is the probability of type 2 error. That is what I have written down. EF of 1 minus phi x is probability of type 2 error for every f belonging to p0. Is infimum, phi 0 x is infimum of phi in d alpha of expected value of 1 minus phi x for every f and phi in d alpha. So in other words, the probability of type 2 error for phi naught is minimum among all tests in d alpha. So one tries, so what one does is one fixes of type 1 error at upper level alpha, then among all tests for which probability of type 1 error is less than or equal to alpha, one tries to find a test which minimizes the type 2 error, which is same as maximizing EF of phi naught x. But EF of phi naught x for f belonging to PM becomes a power. So minimizing type 2 error is equivalent to maximizing the power. And that is what you did. Uh, in the last course. Now one may ask, sir, why you want to put a threshold at alpha? Why don't you put threshold at zero? So that means probability of type two, type one error, which you can commit is zero. That means that is more serious. But you see, when you do a business, you also want to take certain risk. Now if you put probability of type two, one error is alpha, the best test would be the one so you don't want to reject, wrongly reject H0. So what you do is you always accept H1. So if you want this to be zero for every phi, then phi has to be zero. That means you never reject the H0. That means you're playing very safe. And that you don't want to do. You would like to take a little bit of risk, and that is why you are putting a less than or equal to alpha, because if you put this equal to zero, x equal to phi x is equal to zero for every f, the only choice which you get in most cases is phi x is equal to zero for every x. Phi x equal to zero for every x means you never reject h naught. You always accept h1. So here probability of type two, type one error is minimum, which is zero, but probability of type two error becomes one, phi x equal to one. 1 minus phi x is 1. So probability of type 2 error is means wrongly not rejecting H0, that probability is 1. So there is a possibility that new manufacturing plant is extremely good. So if it is extremely good, you like to buy it. So there is some risk involved. And that is, a, is saying that put, decide a threshold which you can put on a type 1 error, then try to find out the test for which the other kind of error is minimum. So this was brief introduction about uh, uh, the testing problem, the classical approach to the testing problem. Uh, now, um, in the next module, I'll try to see how to provide solutions to this problem. And we know that uh, solutions are provided through Neyman, Pierce, and Lemma. So in the next module, we'll review uh, certain results about Neyman, Pierce, and Lemma for testing various kinds of hypotheses. So this is all for this module. Thank you very much. <laughs>